Hold on, we're gonna do the thing after. All right. I consent. The wicked rage garden. It was a stormy evening in the House of Blues, ran by Madame Chartreuse. Tomorrow was the biannual family gathering, and she had just changed the wainscoting to Uncle Neil's least favorite color, periwinkle. We are now in the main dining room where Chartreuse is exam examining the handiwork performed by her nephew and butler, Benjamin. Benjamin? <coughs> yes, yes, madam. <clears throat> Benjamin, I see that the wainscoting isn't quite aligned with the wall. It's not perpendicular to the floor. I'm wondering what exactly inspired this avant-garde notion. <clears throat> well, madam, uh, three weeks ago, uh, after a night of nightmares, you rang your bell on your bedside table to call to me, and you said, Benjamin, I want to live my life in a more avant-garde way. I have been making small changes around the household to accommodate this. This is the only one you've noticed so far. Me? I said that? Indeed. Oh, dear. It seems as though some of my tendencies from my younger days are, are reappearing, Benjamin. Well, I would like you to play in all of this wainscoting flat, but leave it periwinkle, as that is my favorite color. Of course. <clears throat> Thank you, Benjamin. You know, I, I work hard. Were you I work about? hard for you every day. Yeah, yes, you do. Can I, can I come to dinner tonight? Benjamin, you are my brother's son, and the tradition in this family is for each of us to adopt our nieces and nephews and subjugate them for several years so that they learn the meaning of modesty, modesty and respect. This is a very disrespectful question you've asked, Benjamin. How old are you again? You know what would be very avant-garde, if I may be so bold? Inviting me to dinner a few years early. No, yes, no. No, yes, no. Uh, Benjamin, I'm going to go retire to my room. Yes, you can join us for dinner. Good day. We turn to a Chevy Lexus, which is driving down the road at high speed towards Chartreuse's household, driven by her brother. And in the passenger seat, we have Chartreuse's daughter, Samantha, butler to her brother, as is family custom. Uncle. Yes, Samantha? <laughs> I must say you're driving this car really rather, really rather, really rather fast. Samantha, you are always so persnickety and so determined to do things the right way. <laughs> I mean, Uncle, that was what made me a good butleress back before I decided that mm, butlering was beneath me. And now I'm stuck in this car, punished by you with the driving of high speed simply because I will not debase myself by bringing the caviar on a silver platter to you. Well, Samantha, there's a certain way of doing things which you seem to find important when driving, but not important inside the house. How you can hold such great cognitive dissonance in your head at once is very strange and perplexing to me. A cognitive dissonance is the making of the aristocracy. It's in our blood. It's something that I've been talking a lot to Benny Boy Benjamin about ever since he started going avant-garde for the madame. You've been talking to Benjamin? We exchange letters over tele telegram. 
you exchange letters over telegram. Yes, we put the letters inside the telegram and it goes through the wire and then it pops out all paper. Oh, this is most intriguing indeed. Oh, indeed, I'll tell you more if you stop driving at such terrifying speeds. Oh, Samantha, you are on a mission to reform me. I suppose I will pull over to the side of the road. <laughs> what kind of butler would I be if I weren't trying to reform the person I buttle to? Mm, indeed, it is, a, it is a perennial trait of butlers and their, their persons. <laughs> Remember when you buttled to my great-grandmother Ernesta? Oh, I do indeed. Yes. She, she was forever chewing with her mouth open, and it was I who convinced her to stop. Mm, was you who convinced her to stop, uncle? And now I'm convincing you to, do, to, you to do something equally important as chewing with one's mouth closed, that and being not driving at too high a speed in the Lexus. Very well, Samantha. I will obey the posted signs and speed limits for the remainder of our journey. <laughs> now, as to what uh, Benny Boy Benjamin has been telling me, you know, your son, the one that you gave to your sister to work for a period of 15 years as an indentured servant. Yes, that's right. Well, over the, our telegram letters, I've heard that he's been adding little bitty avant-garde Easter eggs for your sister. Oh my. The wainscoting was perpendicular, and now I, I doubt she'll leave that, although she might let it be periwinkle, because she always did love that color. Um, the he's wainscoting been... is periwinkle? Yes, and I know that you're allergic to periwinkle. I am deathly allergic to periwinkle ever since the incident. Oh, the incident. But don't you oh. know that death is very avant-garde these days? Death is avant-garde? Of course. Don't you want to be hip with the times? All the kids are talking about what lies beyond. They're all doing Hamlet because Hamlet has suddenly become in style again. Ring-a-ding-ding, -ding, telegram on your phone, ring-a-ding. Let me answer the telegram on my phone. Here's the letter. And let's see what Benny Boy Benjamin has to say. Great, Scott, we need to get to the house. Very well, on to the road. <laughs> In an attempt to make things more avant-garde, Benjamin has taken upon himself to turn the ceiling into the floor and the floor into ceiling and permanently glued such things to the opposite surface, surface so that now the table is on the ceiling and the chandelier is on the floor. Benjamin is discussing his dastardly, but also somewhat helpful remodeling with his cousin, Samantha, in the servant quarters. Oh, my, 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 Benny Boy Benjamin, I do love what you've done with the play. So... Samantha, if I can just get this glue onto my feet and get my feet onto the ceiling, why then, when, uh, when our various parents walk in, they'll say, why is everything on the ceiling? And I'll say, why are you on the ceiling? And that's avant-garde. But, uh, Benny Boy Benjamin, you've forgotten that I'm still on the floor. So how, is ev I, how do you expect me to get on the floor? I can't get paint or glue on my butler high heels. They're very trendy. Samantha, you are Ever trendy. That's Ever with the times. That's why I got trendiest butler in Butler Magazine seven years running. Indeed. And then I'm sure that you've heard that the most trendy thing of all is to be avant-garde. Benjamin. Benny Boy Benjamin. Benny Boy Benjamin. Do you really think that after your patron, my mother, wanted to be avant-garde, that avant-garde was still trendy. She's old. She's old hat, which means you're catering to it as old hat. 
You know what they're oh, saying. Oh, Mansa, Mansa, Mansa. Oh, Benny Boy Benjamin. It's out of style to do the things young people do. That's so three weeks ago. The new thing to do is the thing that old people do. Haven't you heard? Oh, but my patron, your father, is older than the madame, and he's not doing avant-garde, which means that, well, it would seem that me doing what he's doing, the non-avant-garde, is the trendiest thing of all. Oh, Manfie. Oh, then you... me. I'll just leave this pail of glue here and go attend to something else. Hmm. We turn back to the main dining room where Uncle Neil is having an allergic reaction to the wainscoting, much to Chartreuse's amusement. <laughs> still sneeze the same way. Here, here, have an EpiPen. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, doesn't it just remind you of us growing up together? Oh, Chartreuse. Oh, how could I forget the uh, incident? When we both bottled for grandmother? Yes. And, 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 and how we tried to stop her from, uh, from, uh, <laughs> Are you all right, Neil? <laughs> How we tried to stop her from closing the curtains during the day and opening the curtains during the night. We that had didn't to didn't make any her. sense. No I... sense at all. Oh. I don't understand it. It's almost like he hated the sun for some reason. Almost, almost, but... Or she, oh. rather. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. So many years. Anyway. Well, you've gotten mucus all over your tie. Would you like a new one? Uh, well, certainly. You know, Neil, I've been in my sleep, mind you, my unconscious mind, but at least so your son tells me, has been reaching for the avant-garde. The avant-garde? I... My... I... A man... Samantha was was telling me about the telegram she's been exchanging with, with Benjamin about the avant-garde. Well, I didn't know they were in any communication. That's very I, untraditional. It's most unconventional. Hmm. Well, hmm. I, the point that I wanted to make to you was, I'm beginning to enjoy it even when I'm awake. Oh. Even as we sit here in this room where there is no furniture on the floor and all the furniture is glued to the ceiling and we are surrounded by periwinkle wainscoting that is not aligned with the right angles of the room? It makes me think about the meaning of life and existence and my place in the universe. Chartreuse, that is a very bold position to take. I wonder if you are forgetting our roots. We have some deeply entrenched positions in this family. Positions, traditions, impositions, all the issues. Why, we have this long-standing custom of swapping children and making them learn how to be butlers and... and Neil, uh, what if tradition isn't the way forward? Are you saying that tradition inherently looks towards the past? It seems that way. Mm, this oh, is very let's unsettling. In the dining room. Very well. As Chartreuse exits to go to the dining room, um, Benjamin catches her father and pulls him into the broom closet. For in this family, another rule is once your child leaves for butlery, you are not allowed to communicate with them whatsoever. Benjamin, we shouldn't even be having this conversation. Please, gently caress my cheek as you always did when I was a child. Benjamin, this is most unconventional. I don't understand the meaning of this. You'll understand soon, Father. Uh, uh, very well, just one quick pat. 
<clears throat> Thank you. Father, I must tell you. You always taught me the ways of, of, of trickery and subtle, subtle meanings. Mm, that I did, through our many I, games. <laughs> I have been hatching a plot, you see. A plot? I heard that your sister has recently been getting into the avant-garde. It's true, I have heard as much. And if my, if my trap has gone as planned, my cousin, Samantha, too, is getting into the avant-garde. The avant-garde is taking over this entire family. <laughs> yes. And don't you see, when you and I are left as the only bastions of the old guard, the only two who have any sanity left, why, they'll have to promote our side of the family to keeper of the keys and money. So you have been pretending to be enthused about this avant-garde nonsense. Oh, even more than that, I've been pretending that my aunt is the one who gave me the idea in the first place and that I've just gotten carried away. Oh, that is most becoming of a member of this side of the family and a sure sign that we are deserving of becoming the keepers of the keys. For many hundreds of years, our side of the family has been trampled in the dirt, denied what should be rightfully ours. I thought it would please you, father. Oh, it does. And remember, Benjamin, this conversation never happened. <laughs> Another rule in this family is one side at all times must keep the keys to the secret room. No one knows besides the keeper of the keys what is in this room, but there is a room. Simultaneously with the previous conversation, Samantha had entered the dining hall finding her mother, Chartruth, alone. Father, don't mind me, I'm just standing on the ceiling. I'm not even talking to you. I'm discussing the idea of a mother in the abstract, because well, let's be honest, it's not like I've ever really had one. Oh, as I muse aloud to myself, I, uh, I must wonder if, if my poor darling daughter has gotten the wrong idea about my parenthood, and if she thinks that I abandoned her at a young age of my own volition, and not because I was forced to do so. Well, I'm wondering about how I've recently heard that my cousin, Benny Benjaboy Benjamin, has been allowed to come to dinner, <coughs> all for the sake of avant-garde, yet, well, I don't remember the last time I was allowed to dinner in this house, the house I was born in, the house I spent the first eight years of my life in. But, well, what are all of these things anyway? Just musings from the ceiling. How interesting that my mind turns to the thought of whether my brother Neil will permit his butler, Samantha, whom he has full custody of, to sit at the dinner table and how grateful I am that that is not my decision to make. Oh, I'm just thinking about what it means to be a mother and what it means to abide by tradition. And I mean, tradition was trendy back around the time I was born, up until the time I was 10. But I mean, is tradition valuable in and of itself? Is tradition simply a means of permitting the foibles and follies of the past to follow us into the future. Is tradition a good? Or is it a neutral, extant article that we can choose to carry with us if we wish, especially if we're the side of the family that houses the generational wealth as the keeper of the keys? Samantha, let's do away with this pretense. Your brother almost killed me driving the Lexus at 150 miles per hour. Lexus has been a terrible driver, and that's not my fault. You can hardly blame me for that, Samantha. I don't understand when it became trendy or fashionable, as you like to talk about it, to blame your mother or your parents for everything, to act as though nothing is your own fault. 
It became trendy in 2018. The Spring Vogue edition talked about blaming your parents for things. I don't even know what a Vogue is. Samantha, to follow the whims of others in your quest for fashion, don't you realize that you've given up any of your own beliefs? Certainly, I follow tradition, and that's because I choose to. I care about traditions, because I care about keeping this family together. And if you knew what was in the secret room like I know what was in the secret room, then you would follow tradition, too. As a lull comes in the conversation, Samantha and Chartreuse are joined in the dining room by Uncle Neil and Benjamin all four in the same room for the first time in 15 years. Neil. Oh, let the games begin. Yeah. <laughs> Samantha, stop that. Yes, uncle. <laughs> you have such a wonderful handle on her. She's always so unruly with me, Neil. Mm. I study the traditional methods and terms of the butler fancy person relationship, and I have put them to good effect. You mean the books that Grandmama gave us when we were young? Yes, the books. They're <laughs> illustrated. You remember. Yes, they are. Such wonderful memories. <laughs> Benjamin, go fetch the books, would you? Uh, uh, madam, of course. I've, I've, I've got the books, and, um, while I was in the library, I got this book on uh, postmodern poetry that you were asking me for just as you awoke this morning. Ben Benjamin, postmodernism, I, well, I, give it here. There's, there's one poem that's just three blank pages. You lie, give it. Avant-garde. <laughs> that's the most avant-garde thing I've ever heard. <laughs> What a fascinating exploration of the emptiness of humanity. You know, madam, uh, as long as you are uh, busy reading that book, I, I, do you mind if I give this book to uh, 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 your, your, your brother, to whom I, I bear no interest, but just it's heavy on my arms. Oh, Benjamin, then. I shall pass it along to Neil, as you should not be interacting with him per the laws of our family. Of course. Uh, of course. Which book is this I might abstractly render? Oh, it's already passed. Oh. Just, uh, just a book. Nothing, nothing important. Just no pack. secret locations hidden in the last chapter. No, certainly not. It's just a regular book with no additional index. And, Please, and uh, madam, in this moment of reunion and joy, for you and your brother, of course. Nobody else at this point is meeting or interacting. Yeah, of course, Benjamin, of course, yes. Might you read a poem of your choice to us? I shall read the one you mentioned before, the three blank <laughs> As the poem is read, there is a knock at the dining room door. There's no other expected guests. Who could this be? Who could that be? Who could it be? I'll go get it. Hello, Hello. Samantha. Hello, Grandmama. It's so good to see you. Uh, please, please, please. Uh, may I ask? Um, I mean... We typically only see you for Saturnalia and the equinoxes. What brings you here this fine eve? Good day, uh, Well, I thought I'd come check up on how the keys are being taken care of. I got this strange telegraph letter suggesting that they perhaps weren't in the best of hands. Very strange. Well, you have nothing to worry about. I can assure you that we were just in the middle of a reading of an avant-garde postmodern poem, so all is as it should be. Yes, right, right. there are no words at all in this poem. Who was reading the avant-garde poetry? It, it, it was I, was... Grandmama. Chartreuse, I knew there was something wrong with you. I, ah, have you forgotten 
what it says in the Butler books, volume three, page nine, paragraph C. The avant-garde is to be ignored at all costs for it tarnishes the traditions we hold dear. I know, grandmother, but, but, it's fun. And it, and it makes me introspect about the meaning of this family and the meaning of what's in the room. Grandmama, you know that fun and introspection are antithetical to everything the aristocracy in general and this family in particular stands for. Exactly. Is there fun in tradition? No. Chartreuse, give me your keys. Grandmother, no, please. Don't strip, don't strip me of my post. Ahem. I'm waiting. Thank you. Here you go, Neil. I always liked you better. You were a far better butler than your sister, the butless. Then why did you give me the keys, you liar? It's tradition to give it to the younger child. And you are the younger child, and I was simply following tradition. Now, I must go. I have a bingo game to win. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, Grandmama. Goodbye, Grandma. Please shut the door behind me. At least keep some semblance of tradition. Of course, Grandmama. I must say, Something doesn't seem quite right here. I don't know what you're talking about, Samantha. The keys are in their rightful place. Everything is neutral. I have no opinion on the matter. Neil, you true. snake, this was your plan all along, wasn't it? Well. You and your, your tricksy ways, you always found ways to cheat at the games we played when we were young. You always tricked me into, into bringing Grandmama the wrong things. Was this all an elaborate ruse so you could get the keys? I think you've answered that question for yourself, Chartreuse. But the real question is, would Grandmama really be so foolish as to be tricked by an elaborate ruse? She made that decision of her own free will. The keys are where they should be. You're right. I need to go think about this in my study. Oh, read a poem with no words about it, why don't you? Uncle? Samantha? I'm going to retire to the butler's quarters for the time being. Very well. We've done it. Well done. <laughs> I'm off to tend to my aunt. <laughs> we turn to Chartreuse's study, in which she weeps onto a marble bust of her late, 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 late grandpapa, as is tradition when seeking physical comfort, enters Benjamin. <laughs> oh. Oh, ma madam. Benjamin. Oh, you weren't um, supposed to see me like this. Handkerchief? Yes, I've, I've brought 12 varieties of handkerchief. Which, which, which would you like? The blue with white embroidery. Of course. Thank you. I'm sorry you had to see me in such a fit of emotion. Well, you know, it, um, it may not be traditional to express emotion. For instance, regret or sorrow to have caused a family member pain. Those are emotions it would not be traditional to express. No, Benjamin. However, now that you've, you've, you've broken form from tradition. Don't remind me. <laughs> I don't see why you can't express yourself. 
and, and do all the things you've always dreamed of. You mean become a singer? I've heard your voice, madam. Aunt. I'm, I'm sorry you had to hear me break tradition in that way. It's very improper, you know? Of course. I suppose now that I'm no longer guardian of the thing inside of that room, I, I am disgraced by this family. What's up? What? other thing inside of the room, Ma madam, might it help to air your thoughts a bit more fully? I am a listening ear. I am here to help. Benjamin, you don't understand. In order to put to words the thing inside of that room, it, it would take aeons, centuries. There are no words to describe something so beautiful and so terrible. Benjamin. But I'm free of that weight. I, I can pursue whatever I'd like. Benjamin, this is, this is a blessing. Neil will see, Neil will understand the way, the mistakes that he's made. And Benjamin, perhaps this could be a gift to you too. After all, since you haven't had any interactions with your father, as is traditional, you'll be safe. I have to go start packing. Uh-oh. We cut to Uncle Neil after seeing what is in the room. No words, no words can possibly describe what I have seen today. I don't know. I am a changed man. I am a man of many regrets. I am a man of untold sorrows. The man of many twists and turns. Oh, 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 look at the key. Look at the key. Oh. And, and, and see. <laughs>